Hello friends, welcome to my channel Civil Smart. In the last video, in the part 1, we are designing the beam footing for this eccentric loading of this footing because this is the property line and this is the eccentricity comes on this footing. So we are designing it through by combined strap footing. If you like this video, please share this video for with your friends and please subscribe this channel for more videos like this. We have the data that this is the property line column, size of the column has been given and the loading on the column is also given. The internal column that is the B uh, for which the loading has been given. Then we have put these loading conditions in our actual sheet and calculate the size of the footing like L1 and L2 and the width of the footing. Right. So width of the footing we have assumed 1.5 meter. So L1 plus L2 comes out to be 4.16 meter. In the part 1 we have described all the thing, these things in detail. The CG of the footing is coincides with the CG of the column and finally we have find the quadratic equation where we calculate the L1 that is uh, comes out to be 2 values and the minimum value has been taken as L1 value 2.23 and L2 is 1.93. Net upward pressure has been calculated in the first part and the depth of the footing of the on the basis of bending movement has also been calculated in the first part that comes out to be 358 now we are calculating the reinforcement in the slab that is the footing right we are calculating the reinforcement in this slab so we have taken the transfer direction as the critical section in the face of the column right so we main reinforcement comes in this direction transfer direction right so this is the movement we have calculated wb1 square by 2 36.82 so after having this formula 50 fc cap on fy 1 minus square root 1 minus 4.6 mu divided by fc bd square from the is code the pt comes out to be 0 0.06 percent and the area of the steel is comes out to be 286 mm square so minimum area of the steel as per the is code should be 0.12 percent in the footing that is 644 and we have assumed the 12 mm bar dia so the spacing required is 391 but we are providing due to cracks due to shear consideration we are providing in the less spacing between the reinforcement that is 150 mm so finally if you are pro providing 160 mm so the number of the bars will change so in our case we are providing 150 mm so length, length of the footing we have calculated 2.23 so number of the bars in the transfer direction comes out to be 15 for footing a length of the footing was 1.93 that this is the in mm so number of the bars calculated in 30 numbers right the area of the footing provided is this and the pt provided is 0.3 so we have provided the reinforcement in the transfer direction as 12 mm 150 mm center to center if we change this like uh, we will provide 170 mm then number of the bars will change and this will be also changed so this is 150 mm we are providing now for the nominal reinforcement in the longitudinal direction in both the footings so for the nominal reinforcement 0.12 percent of b into d as per the is code this is the area assume we have assumed the bar dia as 12 mm if we assume 10 mm facing required will be changed so we are assuming the 12 mm also in the distribution steel so spacing provided comes out to be 150 mm so width of the footing is 1500 mm we have assumed above so finally the 10 bars required in the longitudinal direction of both the footings right so we have calculated in the transfer direction the number of the bars and in the longitudinal direction that is the nominal reinforcement so next step is design of the strap beam footing this is the strap beam we are going to design the shear force calculation and bending movement calculation first we have to find out so this seat has calculated the shear force and the bending movement calculations by itself so i am explaining you how it calculates so we have to calculate the shear force at the outer face of column A that is the outer force of column A no force is acting on this point so the shear force will be zero at this particular point right this is the shear force diagram okay shear force at the inner face of the column A that is the inner face of the column A if you are finding the shear force at this point 
सो नेट अपवर्ड प्रेशर वी हैव कैलकुलेटेड नेट अपवर्ड प्रेशर लोड पर मीटर विथ ऑफ द फोर्टिंग इज थ्री जीरो सिक्स वी हैव मल्टीप्लाइड दिस बाय वन पॉइंट फाइव सो नेट अपवर्ड प्रेशर इज थ्री जीरो सिक्स पॉइंट एट टू किलो न्यूटन पर मीटर मल्टीप्लाई बाय दिस डिस्टेंस विच इज विच डिस्टेंस वी आर कैलकुलेटिंग दिस ऑन दिस फेज मल्टीप्लाइंग बाई दिस डिस्टेंस इन टू बी दिस वल इन टू बी वी आर कैलकुलेटिंग एट दिस फेज माइनस लोड द डिजाइन लोड कम्स ऑन द कॉलम दैट इज फोर जीरो फोर पॉइंट फोर फाइव शेयर होज एट द राइट एज ऑफ द कॉर्नर फुटिंग दिस इज द कॉर्नर फुटिंग एंड दिस इज पॉइंट डी सो वी आर कैलकुलेटिंग एट द एज ऑफ दिस फुटिंग डी सो दिस कम्स आउट टू बी दिस दैट इज द लोड सॉइल प्रेशर कम्स फ्रॉम द बॉटम मल्टीप्लाई बाई दिस टू पॉइंट टू थ्री माइनस फोर नाइन सेवन This comes up to be one eighty-eight point six nine, and no, we are assuming that no pressure from the soil or no external load comes on this strap beam in this portion, right? In this portion from D to E, so the shear force will remain same one point eight eight point six nine from D to E. Then the shear force at the inner face of the column B. This is the inner face of the column B. This this is the shear force at this point plus this. This is the portion multiply by this minus this by 2 becomes in the cantilever portion like this right the so 438 comes out to be the shear force at the inner column shear force at the outer face this is the outer face this comes out to be minus the formula is in the all the cells have been taken finally the bending moment we have to calculate the bending moment bending moment will be maximum at where the zero shear force will be zero so shear force is zero at a distance of x from the face of the column a this is the point a we are taking the x from x at a x distance the shear force is zero we are assuming this so we have to find the this x distance and we have calculated already calculated the shear force at this point 404 right minus this is the portion comes from the bottom right into x 306 into x minus this equals to zero. We have to find shear force is zero at this point. So this divided by this comes out the distance of x. That is 1.32. So we have calculated the shear force distance x. So so we have to find the maximum Hogge moment at x 1.32. This is the distance. So how we can find it? So we can find it by this. The soil pressure comes from the bottom. And multiply by this distance. How much the this distance will be? 1.32 plus this 0.3. This is the width of the column. Minus this load comes from the top. Multiply by this distance. 1.32 plus b by 2. This is 300 by 2. So this is the formula on this cell. Finally, we have find the hogging moment. This comes out to be 327.25. so maximum sagging moment we can calculated at this point by the same formula right so this is the formula and comes out to be 10 1.55 kN kN meter the point of counter flexure from the this is the point of counter flexure is where the bending moment is zero so we have to find this point of counter flexure so from this point that is the f the distance is x1 so finally we have calculated by the quadratic equation this comes out to be 1.29 meter from this point f shear force at the point of counter flexure is 383 we have calculated the shear force after finding the x1 the excel sheet has calculated the shear force at point of counter flexure like this this point is the point of counter flexure where the shear force will come out to be 383.64 now to find the depth of the strap beam footing the so width of the strap beam footing will be the maximum of the maximum of the column depth right so in our case 300 mm is the width of the footing so point noted is that depth of the beam is greater than the footing slab hence the t beam action occurs for this section this the t beam action will occur right and the depth of the beam is calculated with respect to the moment along section where rectangular section of l will level so maximum hogging moment occurs at the d of zero shear d point because in this case the t beam 
resisting the movement but after t beam this is the portion for the rectangular portion only and the critical section will occur at t point right so this is the concept the hogging moment at the t is md is minus 269.22 kilonewton meter so movement coefficient mu limiting is divided by fck bd square that comes out to be 0.133 so d required equals to square root mu upon 0.133 fckb that is the formula so finally d required comes out to be 580 mm so we have adopted d as 600 mm so effective depth cover is 50 mm so finally depth of the beam from this portion to depth of the beam comes out to be 650 mm for the t beam portion like this if we are in this portion for the T beam portion we have to find the effective width of the flange that is the BF effective width of the flange so from this formula of the IS code this is L0 upon L0 by B plus 4 plus BW where BW is the width of the web L0 is the point of zero moment this is the point the zero moment where the moment is zero and this is C where the moment is zero the distance between the point of zero moment is the L0 so we have to find this point how we, we can find this point this is the center to center distance plus b not b by 2 we comes out this plus the b by 2 plus this cantilever portion right cantilever portions minus this x1 so finally we can calculate the n0 that comes out to be 3.33 so b is the actual width we have calculated above 1.5 meter that is 1500 mm bw is the actual web width this is 300 mm so df is the flange depth of the footing 358 in our case we are putting these values in this formula finally the effective width of the flange comes out to be 836 mm since the t beam action is available at CD and considering x u equals to df this is the this is the neutral axis and this df depth of the flange so if you are considering the x u equal to df then movement of resistance formula is 0 0.36 fck bf bf is the width of the flange we have find it out df is the depth of the flange bracket d minus 0 0.42 x u so finally if we put these values in this formula so 968.40 kN meter comes out to the moment since moment of resistance is greater than the m max 327.25 x so the neutral axis falls inside the flange so x u is less than df so x u lies this is the df 358 x u is less than df hence the comp compression occurs in this portion so compression will be at the footing portion so we have to place the reinforcement for the compression in at the bottom and the uh, tension occurs in the beam portion so here this part 2 comes to the end in the next part we will calculate the longitudinal reinforcement in the beam at the top portion how much the bars we have required we will check it for the tension reinforcement from this criteria m1 by b plus l0 should be greater than or equal to ld ld is the development length then we will calculate the longitudinal reinforcement in the bot bottom for the maximum sagging bending moment how much the number of bars we, we have required right for the shear calculation the detailing will be done by this excel sheet also the shear reinforcement then the one way shear check and the punching shear check that the criteria is fulfilled and the bearing stress of the column so if we change this this is the, these are the shear force calculation and bending moment calculation if we change our load like this if we take is this 500 and we take is for 800 then then we for we have to assume the 2 meter we are assuming the beam width width of the footing then comes out to the l1 and l2 have been formed it out now we have to check the shear force calculation at this have been changed and the bending moment calculation the point of shear, zero shear force the point of contraflexure distance has already been calculated so these actual sheets are very useful for everyone to calculate design of the any portion of the building right thanks for watching